when it comes to climate change, President Joe Biden talks a big game, and that rhetorical difference between him and Donald Trump is actually really important. Having said that, though, at the end of the day, if your actions don't actually match the rhetoric that you're espousing, then it really doesn't matter. You're not really an ally. And I don't think that anyone who watches this channel thinks that Joe Biden is actually an ally when it comes to the fight against anthropogenic climate change. But still, you are the president. You made many promises to young people. And you're not following through on those campaign promises. So as Walker Bragman of the Daily Poster explains, President Joe Biden has been touring climate ravaged areas of America, warning that climate change is a code red emergency for the planet. And yet his administration has continued to boost fossil fuel projects and is now preparing to vastly expand offshore drilling. The White House argues that a court order it opposes and is appealing requires federal officials to lease more than 78 million acres of the Gulf of Mexico for fossil fuel exploration. Environmental groups, however, assert that federal law gives the administration broad discretion over whether or not to hold such sales. In fact, Biden's officials have instead used that power to officially declare that the warnings in the recent Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change report does not present sufficient cause to reevaluate the drilling plan. Wow. With the help of the nonprofit public interest organization Earth Justice, several environmental and Gulf groups have now launched a lawsuit against the administration to stop the Gulf lease sale. The complaint argues that the environmental analysis behind the lease sale is based on outdated and arbitrary science in violation of federal law. So I want to go back to that quote. The latest IPCC report on climate change, quote, does not present sufficient cause to reevaluate their drilling plan. In other words, they saw that same report that we all looked at, that we talked about on this program, and they thought, meh, we're still going to drill in the Gulf of Mexico. That's what we're going to pursue. It's just, it's callous, it's heartless, and it's, it's psychopathic at this point. It is borderline psychopathic. We've ran out of time when it comes to climate change. Now it's a matter of how bad are we as a species going to allow it to get. And it turns out there is no limit to how, you know, devastating these reports are. It can say that, you know, the world is going to end tomorrow if we don't change everything immediately. And they'd still continue to do the same fucking thing. Now, it's not like Joe Biden, to be fair, lied about this thing, because when he became the president, he signed an executive order pausing all new leases for drilling on public lands and even canceled the drilling lease for the Gulf of Mexico drilling permit that we are talking about right now, the 78 million acres. And to be fair, his administration canceled drilling leases in multiple states, which did actually prompt lawsuits by Republicans. But with these lawsuits that his administration is facing from Republicans, that's where the issue comes in. Because rather than fighting and holding strong, well, of course, in true Democratic Party fashion, they caved. So Bragman continues, in response to Biden's order, 13 Republican states, Alabama, Alaska, Arkansas, Louisiana, Georgia, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, Nebraska, Oklahoma, Texas, Utah, and West Virginia sued the administration to restart the leasing program in the Gulf of Mexico, Alaska, and western states. Wyoming also sued in a separate suit. The state attorneys general involved in the suit were all members of the fossil fuel-funded Republican Attorneys General Association. Alabama Attorney General Steve Marshall is the association's policy chairman. In June, a Trump-appointed federal judge in Louisiana, Terry Doty, granted the 13 states a nationwide preliminary injunction against Biden's moratorium, directing the leasing program be resumed. Doty ordered that the administration was specifically barred from implementing the pause with regards to the lease sales in the Gulf of Alaska. Millions and possibly billions of dollars are at stake, Doty wrote. Following the ruling, the Republican states involved in the lawsuit filed a motion to hold the Interior Department in contempt for refusing to allow the order. The motion sought to compel the department to hold the Gulf of Mexico lease sale. In response, the administration filed notice that it was appealing the judge's order as well as a defiant brief challenging the Republican state's motion on the grounds that the court order did not compel Interior to take the action specified by plaintiffs, let alone on urgent timelines specified in plaintiffs' contempt motion. Nevertheless, on September 1st, days after filing the brief, the White House posted a new record of decision online stating it would be moving forward with the Gulf of Mexico lease sale and saying that the IPCC report would not change its environmental views on the plan. So that's what happened. It's not like Joe Biden did a switcheroo, right? He ran on 
ending drilling on federal property. And then when he got into office, it was a change of story. Now, he did actually follow through in the beginning, but this inevitable legal battle against this new executive order, which he should have anticipated, because as I said, it's inevitable, he just chose not to fight. He chose to unilaterally disarm. And think about the justification that the judge used, the Trump-appointed judge used to um, go through with this uh, this drilling. Millions and possibly billions of dollars are at stake. That's what they care about. It doesn't matter that millions and possibly billions of lives are at stake. Money's to be made here. Look, I don't mean to sound like a broken record, but if we don't end capitalism, if we don't kill capitalism, cap capitalism is going to kill us. Global capitalism is going to kill the entire planet off. And I just, I can't see any way out of this crisis with the current economic system that we have in place, with the current incentives that currently exist. It's just unsustainable. But I mean, I, I'm obviously preaching to the choir, but it's just really frustrating because even the bare minimum that we'd expect from a democratic administration, we don't expect them to actually institute a Green New Deal, but to not allow drilling on federal lands, that's like the bare minimum. And he can't even fight to do the most minimal thing that would have the least amount of impact. Just no new drilling leases. It's depressing, honestly. Every single climate change story that I do, I get more and more doom and gloom. But it's not like we can turn away and bury our heads in the sand. This is our planet, and we have to fight. And in order to fight, we need to know what's going on, and we need to know who's fighting for us. And it's certainly not Joe Biden, which is why I was very, very adamant about electing Bernie Sanders in 2020. Because when it comes to climate change, there's no co compromises. Incrementalism isn't going to save us. Incrementalism is going to kill us. And when it comes to the U.S. pledge to finance developing countries' transition to sustainable energy, Biden just announced that we'd be doubling our contribution. But still, even with that bump, this was likened to throwing droplets at a fire. It's just not enough. And that's exactly right. Whatever he does... Even if it's a step in the right direction, it's woefully inadequate because this is a crisis. I mean, nobody's acting like this is the crisis that it is in actuality. No, Nobody, no politician is treating this with the urgency that it needs. This is a hair on fire moment and everyone's just asleep at the wheel. And I mean, already we see the consequences of anthropogenic climate change, record-breaking heat waves wildfires that are now an annual thing and yet we're all still just allowing capitalism to reign supreme and the best we get are these weak fighters and democrats who they'll talk tough but when push comes to shove they always back down and that's really sad but people like joe biden he's not going to have to bear the brunt of what climate change has to offer future generations will and they're going to be absolutely furious at the catastrophe that we are handing off to them and I don't blame them.